In this video we'll have a look at how to create power-ups in Unity. Not much to say about that, so let's just jump into it. So when it comes to making a power-up, it can really be split up into three stages. First we have some kind of object that will register whenever our player gets near it. Then when he picks it up, we apply some kind of effect to our player. This could be making him bigger, give him more health or give him a new gun. And then finally we create some cool particles and remove our power up from this scene. Let's start by focusing on the first step. So as you can see I have a scene here in Unity where we can move around our player. And the first thing that we want to do is create a power up for him to pick up. Now we can really use any model here, I've created a simple one in Blender. So here it is in Unity. All we need to do is drag this into the scene, I'm going to focus on it in the scene view and I'm going to drag it down here. I also want to make sure to apply the proper materials, so I'll drag in the center here. So now we have a simple model that we can apply our script to. Let's select our power up, let's hit add component and the first thing that we want to add is some way for Unity to detect whether or not we are colliding with other objects. So we'll of course create a sphere collider. We'll open this up and we can now adjust the radius to whatever we want. I'm gonna make it a bit smaller than the model. I find this often looks the best. Let's also make sure to mark this collider as a trigger. This way other objects won't actually collide with a power up but our power up will still be notified whenever an object is near. So now we should be able to play the game and of course whenever we collide with our power up nothing currently happens. To change this let's go and add a new component. Let's create a custom script called power up. Select new script, select C sharp and hit create an add. And let's double click to open it up in Visual Studio. Now we can go ahead and delete both the start and update method. Instead we want to be using another callback method used by Unity. I'm talking about on trigger enter. So let's write void on trigger enter. And you have to spell it the exact same way that I did here in order for it to work. We'll then open and close some parentheses and the curly brackets. Now this method is called by Unity whenever another object enters our trigger. And we can actually get some information about the object. To do that we go up here and write collider because we want to know more about the collider we hit and we can then call this collider other. Then we want to make sure that whatever entered our trigger is a player. To do that we could use the tag of the collider. So if we write if other.compare tag, we can check if the tag of the collider is player. And if it is, well then we are ready to go ahead and pick up our power up. We'll make a separate method for that down here, void pickup. And this is of course where we'll actually pick up our power up. So now we've actually taken care of the entire first step. We have a function that gets called whenever we collide with something. We check if that something is the player and if it is we go ahead and call the pickup method. Then we'll take care of the second and third step inside of this method. For now we'll just write debug.log power up picked up. Just to let ourselves know that this is working. Let's now save this go into Unity and now we of course want to make sure that our player is also tagged as player. To do that you go to the tag here at the top and you make sure to select player. If you want to use a custom tag we go into add tag and you can add any tag that you'd like here. If we then go back and select the player we can now use that tag. So now we should see that when we hit play and move into the power up it says power up picked up. Of course nothing else happened but that marks the end of step 1. Next up we'll focus on step 3 which is spawning some cool particles to let us know that something happened as well as removing the power up from our scene. To do that let's go into our code and the first thing that we want to do here is spawn a cool effect. We then want to apply some kind of useful effect to the player. And finally we want to remove the power up from our scene. And the first and last part is actually super easy. It's the exact same method we used when creating a hand grenade. If you haven't checked out that video I definitely recommend you do. To remove the power up object we simply call it destroy and we input game object which means the power up itself. To create a cool effect we first need a reference to the effect. To do that we'll go to the top here and create a public game object and let's call it pickup effect. Then inside of our pickup method we'll instantiate the pickup effect at our current position, so transform.position and using our current rotation, so transform.rotation. If we now save this, go into Unity, select our power up, we can now see that we have an empty slot for the pickup effect. Now I'm using the Unity particle pack that you can get free of the asset store. I'll of course have a link for that in the description. So if we now go in here we can search for the different effects in the pack and I've taken one of these effects and modified them a bit to create a cool power up pickup effect. I haven't done too much, I've basically just switched around a few colors. So if we now hit play and try and pick up the power up, we can see that it disappears in a cool puff of lightning and smoke and everything's so cool. But of course our player is still just as good as he was before. Which of course brings us to the second step, adding effects to our player. And we look how happy he is and we've already pinpointed the place in our code where we can do this. And of course this part is going to completely depend on what you want to modify about your player. 
I'm going to show you a couple of examples. Say we wanted to make our player bigger. Well, in that case, we'd go in here and we'd first need a reference to our player. Up here in our on trigger enter, we actually have a reference to our player and that's the other variable. But down here, that's disappeared. So we need some way to pass this other variable into our pickup method so that we can use it down here. To do that, we'll use a function argument. So just like we write collider other up here, we can now write collider and we could call it other here as well, but I think we should call it player instead, since at this point we know it's a player. And then here when we call our pickup method, we'll simply say that our player should be the other object. This way we are taking something from one function and passing it on to the next. And now inside of our pickup, we can simply use player.transform.localScale to modify the scale of our player. And I want to go ahead and multiply it by some value. And instead of hard coding this in, let's go to the top here and create a variable for this. Let's create a public float called multiplier. And we'll just default this to something like 1.4. Then in our pickup method, we can simply write multiplier. So now after instantiating our particles, we should see that our player gets 40% bigger and then we move on to destroying the power up object. Let's try and save this. And if we now play and pick up our power up, we can clearly see our player gets bigger. Awesome. But of course you might not always want to just make your player bigger. Say if we wanted to change some stats on a player, such as give him more health. Well, let's have a look at how to do that. In this case, we would probably have some kind of script sitting on the player called player stats. Then I've gone ahead and created a very, very simple player stats script. If we open this up, all that you see in here is currently a public float storing the amount of health our player has. Now this is of course a ridiculously simple example. But the main thing that we need to worry about right now is how to make this health bigger using our power up. Well, since this player stats component actually sits on our player object, we can simply use dot get component of type player stats in order to get a reference to it. We can then store this reference inside of a player stats variable that we'll call stats. And now we can use stats dot health in order to modify this variable. And just like we did before, we can simply multiply it by our multiplier variable. So now we should see that our health go from the default 100 all the way up to 140. If we save this and go into Unity and hit play, we can keep a look at our health variable over here. And we're now into the power up. We can see that it bumps right up to 140. So that's how you can make changes to your player by picking up these power ups. But often you don't want these changes to last forever. It's very common for power to only last X amount of seconds. Well, in that case, we'll need to go in and modify our script. What we need to do is go in here and wait X amount of seconds. We then need to reverse the effect on our player. And then we can go ahead and destroy the game object. Well, this is actually fairly simple. In order to reverse the effect on our player, all we need to do is go in here and say stats.health. And this time, instead of multiplying by our multiplier, we'll simply divide by our multiplier. And now our health should be back to normal. But in order to wait X amount of seconds, we actually need to change this method from an ordinary function that returns nothing into what we call a coroutine. Because coroutines allows us to pause and wait. If you've never dealt with coroutines before, you might find that the syntax is really weird. And that's probably because it is. But for now, just right after me. So we'll go and replace void here with i in numerator. And now we've actually marked this as a coroutine. Then when we call the method up here, we need to add a tiny bit of extra code. And that is the start coroutine function. And the coroutine that we then want to start is our pickup method. So we need to wrap this into parentheses. And now we've actually set up a coroutine. Now all we need to do is go in here and tell it to wait. To do that, we'll use yield return new wait for seconds. And then inside of these two parentheses, we specify the amount of seconds that we want to wait. We can wait one second, two seconds, three seconds, you get the idea. And of course, we want our wait time to be specified by a variable. So let's go up here and create a public float called duration and set it equal to something like four seconds by default. Then we'll input our duration down here. And this should actually work. However, there's one slight problem. If we now save this and go into Unity and hit play, you'll see that when we pick up our power up, it does change our health, but our power up is still visible. 
until of course the duration runs out and then finally our power up disappears. But we have to wait until we've done all of this stuff before we can destroy our game object. So what we'll do here before we wait is simply disable all the graphics on our power up as well as the collider so that we can't collide with it again. The easiest way to do this is get the two components. I'm of course talking about the mesh renderer as well as the collider. To do that we'll use get component of type mesh renderer as well as get component of type collider. And now we can simply use dot enabled in order to change the state of these two components. And we'll of course set enabled to false. Make sure to do this for both of them. So now we should see our power up gets disabled as soon as we pick it up. For the final time let's save this, hit play, and we should now see that as soon as we pick up the power up it disappears, our health goes to 140, and after 4 seconds it changes back to 100. And there we go, we now have a power up system implemented inside of our game. That's pretty much it for this video, if you enjoyed it make sure to subscribe so you don't miss a future one. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video. Thanks to all the awesome Patreon supporters who donated in October, and a special thanks to Dudeman, Armin, Hans Haftoon, Cole Cabral, Superman the Great, James P, Thomas Volley, Cyborg Mummy, Jason Latido, Derek Heemskirk, Faisal Marify, Manolis, Nick Lang, Aaron, Robert Bund, and Peter Locke. You guys rock.